hello everyone today in this video i am going to explain you how to design strong column and weak beam so as the name suggests this means we are going to design such that the column is strong and beam is weak right so if there is a frame so look at this beam so if this beam fails okay the beam here fails that means if it fails so only you can see that there is a failure in this floor right but if you look at the column if this column fails what happens then the column above will fail and the slab beam everything fails right so we want that the column should be strong so so that there is we can prevent the progressive failure right because if one column fails all the columns near above it and even the beam that is attached or joint that is present in the same joint to the column everything fails right so this is the reason why we want that we should design strong column and weak beam another reason is that if you look at uh, the earthquake codes they have mentioned a point that we have to design strong column weak beam so if you look at earthquake forces the lateral forces if we are designing it as strong column that means the deflection will be so it will be like this together the structure will move okay and the hinges will be formed everywhere that means we have more locations more plastic hinges points where the seismic energy will dissipate whereas if so this was the case for strong column weak beam whereas if it is strong beam and we column in that case this is the ground so same when the lateral force is applied that means the beam so these are the beams that is intact whereas the column there is a movement in the columns so the hinges are formed plastic hinges are formed at the lower columns so as the hinges are formed you can see that if it is not able to take the seismic energy it will collapse the columns will collapse which will be a failure of the whole structure so this is what we prefer in our design so for this different codes have mentioned different uh, amount of movement capacity that we should have for the design that means the nominal strength which means the movement carrying capacity movement carrying capacity of members that means in columns if i take as movement about c it should be greater than so summation of movements of at a joint in column should be greater than the movement capacity of beam okay so c stands for column and b stands for beam so this the movement capacity of column should be greater than the movement capacity of beam 
so that the beam will fail or it will yield okay prior to the column so if you refer to the is code indian standard code so as per our is 13920 clause number 7.2.1 they have mentioned that this factor should be 1.4 okay and if it does not satisfy then we have to increase the else increase the redesign that means increase the width of the column or the size of the column okay so in order to satisfy this we have to redesign if you so this is as per the clause in indian standard code similarly in aci code in 318 this factor okay this factor is 1.2 whereas for euro code they have euro code 8 if you look at they have this factor as 1.3 so different codes have different factors anyhow the main important point is your moment capacity of column should be greater than beam so we will be checking how to calculate the moment capacity so i will just take one example for let's see uh at this point okay the column column is coming so top and bottom and to this you have this beam okay so let me assume this beam as size 230 and depth as 550 similarly let's take this column as 230 and 650 width and the percentage of steel for example from your design it has come as for the column let me take as 3.46% and for the beam at the top 1.5% and at bottom 0.8% okay So this is the reinforcement. That means at the top here tensile. So you'll be ha having I'll take this as moment at beam right side. Okay. This moment i'll calculate as left side okay so this you can see this is for hogging and this is for sagging so here the reinforcement for sagging is 0.8% bottom here at top 0.5% is right so let's calculate the moment capacity for right side and for the mbl left side so calculating the bottom 0.8 percent is mean 0.8 of your b into d so if i'm taking this is the overall depth if i'm taking the d the cover as 50 mm so 500 i'll take as effective depth okay as effective depth 
so this is coming as 920 millimeter square okay so your sagging moment capacity so 0 0.8 percent means this is for this the MBL I'm calculating the sagging moment capacity for B so M what B in the left side so 0 0.87 FY area of steel and into the lever arm distance so D minus 0 0.42 XU so 0 0.87 FY let me take FE 415 okay into 920 D is 500 minus 0.42 XU. So XU is the balanced neutral axis depth. So 0.87 FY. So you can refer my other videos also for more details how to calculate. So this is normal like simply single reinforced beam. Also if you remember same calculation we do into 25 is your FCK which is the concrete strength M25 I'm taking okay so I'm referring to M25 and steel strength is FE 415 okay so getting this the moment is if you calculate you'll get 143.75 kilonewton meter so this is MBL we calculated Similarly, for top MBR, we are going to calculate. So, MBR is that means you are calculating, it's like a hogging moment. So, you have the like W reinforced beam, it is, it is having two parts. One moment is due to the balance section, another due to the compression reinforcement we are providing. Okay. So this is, I'll just write balance section and this is for the FSC, the compression reinforcement we are providing. So for the balance section, I can directly write 0 0.138 FCK BD square, okay, plus MU2 I'm going to calculate before that. FCK is 25 I've considered into width into depth square. So the first part ME1 is 198.375 kilonewton meter plus the second part MU2 this is due to the compression reinforcement so for this we have to first calculate what is the area of steel for the compression portion so due to this balance section what is the steel required so area of steel one if I put due to this MU1 so this is I'll just use same this formula same this formula I'll use to calculate how much steel required so for this 198 point three seven five into ten to the six to convert into Newton mm divided by zero point eight seven four hundred fifteen into D minus zero point four two X U so I'll use X U as balance section so zero point four eight D okay because zero point four eight D is for balance section right so solving this we are getting area of steel as 1376.35 mm square this is as the balance section steel so total if you look at here top steel 1.5 percent is means how much total so this this was top percentage so 1.5 means 1.5 by 100 into 230 into 500 so total percent of steel for 1.5 percentage is 
1725 so if you calculate 1.5 into 230 into 100 1725 similarly like 0.8 percent we calculated 920 so for 1.5 percent is 1725 so area of steel due to balance section is 1376 so due to compression reinforcement area of steel 2 will be total reinforcement we are providing minus this 1376.35 so this comes to be 348.65 mm square so for this what is the moment so mu2 is due to the moment of provided due to area of steel 2 and this was due to area of steel 1 okay because this is hogging moment it is like doubly reinforced beam so you have to calculate steel the moment capacity in this way so coming to this this is FSC ASC which is this area of steel 2 into D minus D dash right so this is equal to FSC 0.87 F I am taking into the steel 348 point this one 0.65 into D minus D dash so 500 minus again 50 right because this cover is above okay so 500 minus 50 so this if you calculate you'll get 56.65 so total moment due in MBR is 255.02 kilonewton meter. So we got MBR, we calculated MBR. So adding this two, you are going to find out the moment capacity of the beam. Right, so the moment capacity of beam is MBR plus MBL. So adding this to, so adding 255.02 plus 143.75, I'm getting 398.77 kilonewton meter. So this is the strength of the beam, okay. Now I have to calculate because I'm going to compare this I'm going to compare this. So I'm now, I calculated moment capacity of beam. Now I'm going to calculate moment capacity of column. Okay. So for column, if you look at, either you can calculate as per the axial force that is coming to the column referring that, or you can also if you look at Indian Standard Code as per IS 13920 clause number 7.2.1.1, they have said that we have to calculate the moment capacity of the column for zero axial force. Okay, zero axial force. So this is like for being conservative side. So PU is zero and our percentage is steel is 3.46 percentage. So P by FCK, if I calculate 3.46 by FCK is 25, so it is coming 0 0.14. So referring the design chart, okay, SP 16, if you refer SP 16 design chart, you can calculate the moment. So you will get MU by FCK BD square value. So referring the chart, it is 0 0.225. So what is the moment? MU 0 0.225 into FCK 25 into BD square. Now when we calculate this BD square, we should always look at the weak axis. Weak axis means where the moment of inertia is less. If I take this, Okay, this if I take this axis, that means your B will be, this will be a strong axis, okay? Why? B is 230 and your depth is 650. So your moment of inertia will be in strong axis, 
will be 2 BD by 12 if I do for the rectangular. So, 230, okay, 230 into 650 Q by 12. Whereas, if I take this axis, which is our weak axis, here your moment of inertia is less because here your width is 650 and your depth is 230. So, if you calculate here, here BDQ by 12, if you calculate the value will be lesser than the strong axis. Lesser than the strong axis. So, we have to take the MU value from the weak axis to 25 into 650 is our width and depth is 230 square. So this comes 193.4 kilonewton meter. So this moment we have at the top also and bottom also. So total moment of capacity of column will be twice of this 193.4 which is 386.8 kilonewton meter. So now checking as per the and IS code if I check. Okay. Clause number 7.2.1 for IS 13920. So, moment capacity of C, if I divide by moment capacity of B, that means 386.8 divided by which we have. So, this is moment capacity of B and we have calculated moment capacity of column. So, I am going to divide this two by 398.77. I am getting 0 0.97. So this is less than 1.4 because here we need that it should be as per the clause it should be 1.4 the factor should be 1.4 that means this does not satisfy this condition by the condition that is beam here in this case the column is not strong enough right. So we have to, it needs redesign. So this is how you can check the strong column weak beam at any joints. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you.